The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, joined this morning by our man Basil Chapman, filling in for Tom once again. Basil, good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you? I'm doing well, man. We have another positive market. Green across the board. Dow Jones up 112 points. Dow hitting 27,000 for the first time. We had S&P 3,000 yesterday. Dow 27,000 today. S&P sitting just under that level. Up four points right now at 29.97. The Nasdaq up about five at 82.08. We got some CPI data this morning, Basil. Nothing too surprising hitting the market pretty much in line. Uh, weekly jobless claims, 209,000 as the economy chugs on and we got a lot going on to talk about it all as we start it off every tuesday wednesday thursday at the top of the hour let's jump over to our man kevin hinks from td ameritrade think or swim right after the show fast market they talk about everything to do with this market and man we got a lot going on today as we have chairman powell back in front of congress and he's over at the senate today kevin hinks good morning good morning tommy good morning basil how you guys doing Doing well, man. Digesting the market you. action as always. And uh, where do you want to start off, Kevin? We got a lot of news. We got Powell back in front of Congress. Yeah. Where are we looking to? You know, I think today's big news is a couple things. The key levels that the S&P is hitting, I think 3000 is going to be a really busy price. You're going to see it, you know, trade around that number a lot here. But, guys, I got I to gotta be honest. The CPI number that came out uh, at 7.30 Chicago time, 8.30 Eastern time this morning was not mild. It was, it was just below what you'd consider hot sure. in terms of prices. And, you know, you're right, Tommy. I heard you mention gas prices down 3.6%. Energy in general down 2.3%. Yeah. So electricity was down, natural gas was down. But, you know, this number, X food and energy – the year-over-year -year number, 2.1%. I'm surprised, frankly, that the bonds the bonds aren't down more than they are. Yeah, you got the 10-year at like 2.08, right? And the headline yeah. that they have out there is U.S. core inflation posts biggest gain in nearly a yeah. year and a half. So there's there's something to eat up there. But the market, pretty muted response in terms of anything well, across here, the board. And here's where I think that, that, that your viewers sh should take note. It's not necessarily that the July meeting, because I think he'll still lower rates at the July meeting. But any perception of more rate hikes or something in the future, I think this may spell out, at least for the time being, that he's one and done on, yeah. on these rate cuts. I think that's what he may allude to, that this economy is strong. He'll do this one. He'll be basically take the December rate hike out of the market and then see what happens he'll go not dove it you know he won't go hawkish but he'll go neutral for sure maybe in a my little opinion. pause for a moment yep. right that and could then shake the, the market up a little there yeah i think i think the market will have to consume and digest that basil absolutely um and you and get uh, i believe you're starting to see a little bit of that with, with, with the tenure now approaching 2.1 percent yeah it, that that's a number that's starting to creep back up it was, so it was I, right. I just think yeah. that's what your viewers should be paying attention to as the data starts to come out. Because it's been a quick reversal since it had that 1.94, the 10-year, yep. and um, sitting at 2.1 yesterday before Powell's remarks become public. But it's creeping right back up to that 2.1 um, after that spike lower. So I would agree. And you, we have the weekly jobless claims too, Kevin, right? 209,000. Another, another historically low number yeah. at 209,000. I mean, how you interpret this, but anything, a strong economy, you might have some right. inflation in there. Um, that's That's got to be on his mind as this comes in. And uh, we'll see if they ask him questions about this data today, which is pretty remarkable that he's going to be in front of Congress. I'm sure they'll try and ask him questions. We'll see if he goes there or not. Uh, now, the, the other news, Kevin, I'm sure you saw some of the health stocks um, in yeah. terms of President Trump 
talking about, uh, where's my headline? There we go, eliminating the rebates. And man, I was just jumping around to some of the stocks to pull it up, folks. I, I went to UNH first, they're up like 5%. I pull up Cigna, man. Is that CI? Excuse me, I'd CI. Yeah, um, across the board, for, everything yeah. having to do with healthcare or or ph pharmaceuticals, CVS, Walgreens, Boots Alliance, they're all percentage Look point that, higher. Yeah. But my my knee jerk reaction to this was, if they're dropping that, what's coming? Yes. Something's going to come. Does that mean they have another plan? Does that sure. mean they have something else in the pipeline to adjust uh, prices? Because I can't imagine that. President Trump is just, and this administration is just giving up no. on trying to get lower per, you know, prescription drug prices. This seems like one of the few bipartisan deals, right, that everyone's kind right. of on board. And unfortunately, they just had a shutdown in terms of having forced these companies to post their prices on some of right. their ads. So maybe this is kind of a regrouping because that caught me off but guard. Don't forget, first. we also had infrastructure, and these things suddenly get shoved aside, and then they become foreground, then background, foreground. And that's kind of what you've got here. That tussle is is part of the market as well. Obviously, every time. So what yeah, else? Yeah, I just it just my, my knee jerk feels but like like there's something else. Like he's 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 stopping this move in order to make another move. I would tend to agree, only because this seems like an easy win for any politician right. that, that the public is behind, and hopefully that that's something that they do. And and you can see how immediately talk about right to their bottom line in terms of the health stocks. You know, they pop because they're going to be able to print that cash <laughs> without right. having to worry about it. Um, right. So so today's show, guys. Today's show we have pre pretty interesting. One of my favorite things to talk about in the new economy, which is payments. How Oof. people pay things. We're going to do PayPal, Square, and then Visa and MasterCard. The four ways now without cash that people are paying for things. Nice. That's an interesting one, man. You throw yeah. some some crypto uh, influence onto what's going on in there in terms of Bitcoin going crazy. Facebook is catching a lot of grief with their plans in terms of Chairman Powell out there talking about cryptos yesterday. But that payment sector in terms of how quick everything's being and then you're bringing into cryptos, of course. And uh, and I know, Kevin, we had mentioned it. We don't get to talk to you on Friday mornings, but you guys yep. cover the FANG stocks on Friday morning. And man, Amazon just keeps chugging. We're sitting at 2033. I joked yesterday that it might be 100 points from where you guys were talking about it on <laughs> Friday. And I think it's going to be above 100 dollars uh, points dollars we're talking about a hundred dollars above where you guys talked about it on friday and just what you're saying tommy and just how quickly and often these stocks move and how important they are to this economy is why we cover them every friday it's amazing. We dedicate our show every Friday to Fang Plus stocks, and we and we make sure that they get as much coverage as possible. So yeah, tomorrow we'll we'll, we'll surely be covering Amazon. I, I I think I think our plans now are to cover Apple as well. So we always work our way through that those ten Fang Plus stocks. As we're that, saying, that we talk about. there were headlines on all of them, right? It's like you yeah. had Apple talking about their devices, and they had news this week. Um, Netflix, HBO Max came out with a new service that's going to be their competitor this week, let alone Amazon. I've mentioned many times they have their Prime Day coming up. I believe it's Monday and Tuesday of next week, which they usually get a little pop on uh, right. all that, all those numbers. All right, man. Well, we look forward to the show. Powell speaking right now. I'm sure you guys are going to have plenty to talk about, and uh, we look forward to the program, Kevin. 45 and minutes from Monday, right now. Monday, guys, the bank stocks are coming out, so now we're way that. deep in earnings season after, after this. So Perfect, buckle man. up, everybody. Perfect. Kevin, we appreciate it, man. Have a great program. Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thank Tommy you, Kevin. Kevin. Great talking to you guys. You too, Kevin. Folks, check it out. 11 a.m. right after this program. Fast Market by TD Ameritrade. Talking everything in the market. Basil and I are going to be coming right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at tfnn.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with the risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of tfnn.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same tfnn.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new tfnn.com now and experience all the upgrades. tfnn.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien, joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got park markets hanging around. I was going to say positive. As we said that, though, NASDAQ actually sneaking into the negative, negative by about two points at 8,200 square. We've got a lot of round numbers going on, Basil. NASDAQ at 8,200. S&P's 2,995. And the Dow sitting just under that 27,000 now, 26,965. So, Basil, what's uh, on your radar of all the things happening this morning? A lot of... A lot so Finally, I've got a yellow light flashing. So we've been very positive Tell us about since what the this June yellow low. Light. Yeah, the June third low. We're waiting patiently. I haven't got it up here, but uh, in the chapter wave, we're always looking for that fourth highest peak from the low bar that starts the buy signal. Buy signal goes to a buy mode. The implication being in the chapter wave that it should go to at least four higher peaks. And I spoke about yesterday, I spoke about this inside Chapman Wave inside track, a technique I developed years ago, where I draw two parallel lines, like a little mini channel at the top on a rising price movement or at the bottom. And if it goes to the top and it gets repelled at that level a couple of times, it says, watch out, that's now um, a, like a barrier. It's like a rising little mini barrier. And it, the price needs to really pierce and close sharply above to be able to overcome that uh, repellent uh, phase. So we're right there. We're at leg D. We made a new all-time high today of 27,007. Uh, that's just a tad above yesterday's high. And all these highs, if you go back to the 21st of June, 26,907, then 20, that B, peak C is 26,966. That's peak C. And now we've got leg D at 27,007, just modestly higher, all within this channel. But that wasn't the issue. The issue is that we've got the same thing in the weekly chart. You can see there's a rising uh, trend line. 
and the monthly going all the way back to January of 2018 at 26,616. And when you think about it, we're at 27, we're at 26,958 right now. We're only 300 points above the high that was made back in January of 2018. In the interim, we've gone down to 23,300, back up to 26,950 for a new all-time high, down again for um, uh, that terrible December, going to yes. the December low of 21,700, and now back into leg C in the, in the uh, Chapman wave in the monthly chart, which means it's still very bullish, but on a shorter-term basis, we're right in that resistance zone. So I'm just to subscribers, we are long, we're making, we're making preparations here, we've taken a little bit off, and now we're making okay. some preparations to say there could be a pullback because you've got the S&P in, in leg E and the QQQ NDX, uh, one, NDX 100 in leg F. This all says just be a little careful here. There could be a turnaround. Yeah, and see how I'm just going to pull up Boeing because with the Dow goes, Boeing goes, or with Boeing goes. No, but you see what's happened is no, we've got a UNH. You've got some other oh, things yeah. going on. And that's this whole, you know, I love the makeup of the Dow at this particular stage for the first time in decades. I think the Dow has got maybe one financial too many, but this is that whole rotational thing. So suddenly you get some weakness in the Dow, but wait a minute. <laughs> You've got to pop up in another sector, and the say it's not really an industrial anymore. What is this Dow Industrials? It's you know, tell me, Microsoft's an industrial. Sure. Uh, Verizon's industrial. No, this is very different. Yeah. So it's interesting. Yeah, and those, um, I mean, just remarkable, remarkable. Walgreens, is in, Walgreens is in there, which is up WBA, about two percent. Boots, yeah, right. I believe one of the, actually, they pull back a bit in terms of because uh, some of them really skyrocketed, man. Cigna and that's in leg E. And, and, well, look at uh, oh, CVS is not there, but yeah, Wal Walgreens, uh, they call it now Walgreen Boots they sure Alliance. Do. Yeah. They sure do. And so this is going to be interesting. You know, we're talking to Kevin. I didn't want to interrupt because he, he really got the point that I wanted to make, so I can talk, elaborate just a moment. Look at the TBT. This is the inverse. This is the ultra-short Lehman 20-year Treasury bond fund. Okay. Now, TLT is the long side. Yep. TBT is the short. And look so at this, this is it's kind of balanced. trading with yields, uh, you could say. This right? is the yield. Yeah. This is purely, yeah, this looks like the TNX, right. the 10-year yield. So this is really looking at yields, and we're looking at... 28.21, just uh, one of these six sessions ago, trading at 29.50. This is one of the bigger moves we've had to the yeah. upside in a long time. Doesn't have to go very high, but it does mean that the Fed is saying one thing, the reality is a little bit different at this particular and time. I think you have to be aware. Yeah, no, I was just going to agree as well as, and that correlates to the jump that was in the 10-year from about a 1.94, 1.93, I think we got down to, up to a pretty quick 2.1. Um, Percentage-wise, that's big, but huge, where we've come right? from, yeah. yeah, but where we've come from, you have to put it into perspective, but definitely on the short term. So yesterday when we were talking, I said, you know, it'd be unusual for us not to make a leg D in the crude oil continuous contract, 60.28, yeah. and was pulling down, then you got that, you got, what was it, there was a shortfall, I think, Yes, uh, there was a draw of like 9 million barrels, and right, it had a little bit of action, but it, and it took... It didn't have much while we were it talking. It didn't, it took some time, I kept day. checking. On it. I know you did programs, you saw it, but it did, right? By about noon, it had started, it got up to 60 bucks, it got to 60 50. It had quite a run. I mean, it's up a dollar from where it was 24 hours ago right now. So, yeah, continuing on that run upward. Right. So, again, yeah, these, are, these are aspects that you kind of dismiss because you've got the bigger picture. But all of a sudden, I think all these little uh, ancillary aspects are going to become important. Crude oil, Bond yields suddenly rallying. Uh, if you're looking at, look, look at this, the um, commodities. Uh, look at the weekly chart, the commodities. Look at wheat. It's had a fantastic run. Uh, just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is eight weeks, and it goes straight up. There was nothing to see in the grains, and then all of a sudden they move higher. So my, my contention is that at some point when, uh, um, it doesn't have to be now, but a little later on, when you really see 
Do, do any of these Fed members go to a supermarket? I mean, I don't know what they look at sure. to get the, uh, know, right? the CPI. Yeah. But, but let's face it, you go to the supermarket, just about everything is more expensive than it was last year. And that's even with competition. Yes, right. So, the, that's, I mean, that's so what I'm saying Amazon is Amazon being in the supermarket business, and they're the best at trying to compete, um, at least presenting that facade of competing on price and bringing that down. Uh, so while you mentioned just uh, wheat, you know, agriculture pops into my mind. Just bringing over one of the headlines, um, Basil, I'm not sure if you go to saw the headline in there in terms of President Trump tweeting out there just at 1004 so about 20 minutes ago Mexico's doing great at the border that one's interesting in its own right but China's letting us down in that they have not been buying the agricultural products from our great farmers and they said they would hopefully they'll start soon so man a lot going on there in terms of agricultural products of course the trade deal that's looming uh, so that just getting tweeted out I wonder if that'll hit any of those markets as we come in um, this morning. And the last thing I'm going to take a peek at, Basil, as we come into this break, uh, we got about 30 seconds left in this segment. We're going to be getting natural gas inventories. And I know Larry, oh, he right. just finished up his program. Natural gas, man, you want some volatility. Let me just put this on a daily to put even I've a little... I've got a leg D in the daily chart on the continuous contract. Okay, it's so the quite a run. Yep, there is quite a run. There. Even just going back a month on the August contract, we were sitting about 217 back on June 23rd. We're July 11th sitting at 246, and uh, we'll get those inventory numbers. We'll see how that reacts when we come back. Folks, Basil and I are going to come right back. We got markets in positive territory. Dow hitting 27,000 today. S&P's at 3,000. Lots of round numbers. We'll be right back in three minutes. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Tommy O'Brien. I have the natural gas contract up there. We'll get the news in a moment. But we saw a little bit of a spike down. We're basled to about 245. We're sitting at about 246 now on that natural gas as we await those numbers to hit us. Um, so what else, Basil? What do you what do you have on your radar? I mean, Amazon, I mentioned to Kevin Hanks, it's remarkable how some of these stocks are going. It's unbelievable that we have bank earnings coming up next week already. Um, and of course, that, that Fed... Uh, meeting at the end of this month looms with with earnings coming coming around so what are you what are you so checking out today yeah, there's a, there are a couple of things that i've been focusing on with subscribers and and that is there is always talk about higher yields are very um, beneficial to the banks so if you go back and you have to put over a, a yield chart and the bank index this yeah there's some correlation but i don't think that's it i think the banks are in a separate field right now and a couple of them also have the brokerage part of it. So I'm I'm looking at, we, in fact, I've had for quite a while, we've had one of the bank stocks that's done very nice, is up about 19%. Um, I, I think this is different because the chart itself says, finally, time alone would do it, but it has done it. The monthly chart, you can see here yeah, that, that technique that I spoke about, the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone in this case, we're now moving out of that, and it's gone to a slightly higher high in the monthly chart. I happen to think that the banks in a little different area, that you have to think of them as a different sector of the market. It's a complex sector, but it's a, it isn't just interest rates. And that says to me that they've held very well, considering that yields have gone down so much. So that part of the story I don't think is, is quite as... Uh, directly impacted in terms of looking at the XLF, the S&P Financial uh, ETF. This is the Spider Fund. Well, if at any point the the, the bank index XLF, which is trading at 27.98, up two cents, actually starts to trade in the high 29s, touches 30, I think that's going to be a different thing entirely. I think suddenly the bank stocks get to be a focus. And I would even include Goldman Sachs. We don't have a position in Goldman Sachs, although it's on my radar as once again, I, I've never seen a mega bull market. If I go back in history, I once did a webinar that was really focused a lot on Goldman Sachs, the IPO back in 1929. It's never not been there in major market tops. So I know they're under pressure, et cetera. But it seems to me that Goldman at some point at, at 207 right now, if it can even touch 222, in the next two, three months, I think that's going to be a big thing for Goldman Sachs and for the XLF. So I'm not dismissing it. So that's part of what I'm looking at. Try to look at under the radar what a lot of people either are misrepresenting, in my opinion, or that have te technical analysis is telling me that whatever it is we're looking at is holding very well, maybe not leading, because I really would like to get the sectors that aren't leading right now for the ones that later in the year will become becoming sure. quite strong. Yeah, that, that chart on Goldman Sachs, I mean, it's mind-boggling. I don't think a lot of people would know if you weren't aware of the chart and just covering it that Goldman's been struggling so much um, on that on that, that monthly yeah. chart, pulling back from 280 to, to under 170, right? What's that low? 151, two, two, wow. Yeah, 250 was the high in October of 2007. Yeah. You know, there was a little problem going from October 2007 to the low of March of 2009. It went from 250 to 47. I would say that's a bit of a haircut. Yeah. And then it has big big moves up and then a lot of time to the downside and then it, and then it rallies to 218 in june of 2015 pulls back to this 200 period moving average the orange line to 138 and it's really been working very hard and then all of a sudden march of last year it goes to 275 all-time high and then kaboom and it's one kaboom. of the few stocks <laughs> in <laughs> in one of the few stocks that i've i've looked at in monthly charts especially one of the majors that actually only went to a peak C in the Chapman wave and failed at a C and not a D or higher at 275.31 okay. in March. So that to me was always 
Fortunately, we didn't have any position, but I did say, am I expecting a D? The technicals look weak. Something's wrong with this picture. Then it went down to 151. That's another 120 points yeah. from the 275. So it's really been strong. Of course, they've got scandals. They've got a lot of news. Sure. And also, they can't trade the way they There was a time, I could be wrong on this, but I, I was shocked once when I read that Goldman had a year in which they had just a couple of days of negative action. Almost yeah. every day was a positive. Yeah, they're they in a different world in terms that. of their yep. trading. They can different do some world. bond trading where things aren't quite as liquid as well. In also, terms of IPOs. Right. We don't do the kind of IPOs we used to do. So. Exactly. You're not we'll talking see. about a retail trader that's just hitting it out of the park. 200 out of 220 trading days a year. Right. Isn't that uh, amazing? And jumping back to that natural gas, so 81 bill, billion cubic feet was the number that came in. Estimates were around 76, maybe 72 to 82. So that explains a bit in terms of the quick push down that we got. A little bit more natural gas coming in at 81 billion cubic feet. The expectation might have been, eight, you know, 76. But nonetheless, What's trading at? I was supplies? going to say, nonetheless, the market shakes it off, and uh, we're about to make some recent highs in natural gas as we'll be at two dollars and fifty cents, maybe in no time, sitting at two fifty-seven. So we're almost three pennies above where we were right on that initial thrust after that news. So what I had mentioned just before we spoke about natural gas, as soon as you mentioned it, and I pulled up the chart. There's in the chapter wave, there's that fourth highest peak with the MACD strong, the stochastic at 87%. So it would have been a surprise to me if it if it pulled back sharply and held at the lows because, yep, it could have been a peak D, but the, the technicals are really very strong in the daily. If you go to the weekly chart, it looks like the TBT, actually, it looks like the yields. Just starting a little bit of a rally here. It's gone a little bit higher. But the MACD is about to cross positive if it does well into Friday. There's a nice turnaround here. I think that okay. uh, this actually looks quite good to me uh, on a short-term basis. And it's got, it's just touching the 14-period moving average resistance right now as we speak. And that's in the weekly chart right at, at 2.499. And it's at... Uh, Two point, I've got 2.487, but I'm a little behind. I mean, historically, it's gotten down to some, you know, a dollar and change when it's really had some lows, but $2, pretty decent price if you're looking for a bounce in the price of that natural gas. Tommy, look at the monthly chart. Look at these huge, I mean, people just look at the chart. And you, yes, uh, no, I'm going way back to the buck 60, right, in yeah, terms yeah, of, yeah, but, these, but these are... Yeah, no, that's why I say $2, Two you know, is a decent price in terms of where we've been. I mean, when when it was really in the press with those spikes earlier this year, Basil, um, you're talking about $4.50 and $5, pretty short-lived, right. but, but far from where we're trading at right now. And isn't that another confusing aspect when you think that natural gas, we have a lot of natural gas, um, but at times we've found that uh, through um, th there are certain areas of the country where it's not a favored uh, a product that they want. Yes. So it's come under pressure. And yet, um, it has the big spikes and it keeps making lower lows. So that really tells us that in the marketplace, there's a, there's a glut of natural gas because otherwise it would be the exact opposite. We'd be looking at $3.75, $4.20. So, so far it's saying that there is a lot of natural gas out there. And what sometimes happens in that market is it gets segmented in terms of where it is in the country too, that there's not quite the flow that sometimes oil or sometimes those Northeast prices would just go bonkers um, because of some of those supply chains and how they got there. All right, folks, we'll be back in three minutes. We get the markets hanging around. NASDAQ negative by nine points now. S&P's flat, Dow up 102. Basil and I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Target First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Target First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got the Dow up 106. S&P is flat right now at 29.93. NASDAQ in the negative by about eight points. And let's go over to our man, Jack Leeson, as we do every Thursday, 40 past the hour. We should call it Where in the World is Jack Leeson the segment. Jack Leeson, <laughs> good morning. What's happening? Good morning, guys. Um, I am in Chicago Hi, here today at my office, so nothing, nothing, exci nothing exciting this time. I always say um, we wait for you to be back in Costa Rica. July, That's a. Do you, do you guys, you still got all your fingers and stuff? I know fireworks are legal down there in Florida. They're not legal up here. But They're not so legal, not man. The world changes, and it seems so normal. Yes, I have all my fingers. Thank goodness. July Fourth was good, but everyone survived. I believe Basil does as well. Um, so what do they just have for you guys? Sparklers and so forth. They got the innocent ones in Florida yeah, man. you know like the things you throw them yeah but we got them in Indiana and we got them in Wisconsin I was actually up in Wisconsin for the fourth nice. so you know a couple mortars here and there you know uh, and just before we get in the market it's crazy than Florida I believe and I think we touched on it last time right that it's it's something where you're almost signing that you're gonna use them for a purpose of like um, hunting or, or ground removal on your your there's some loophole that they get into the ability to, to sell you the type of explosives for your uh, but nonetheless, always be careful yeah, right? with fireworks. Yeah, I mean, All right, so what are we looking like at in the market today, Jack? Man, we got a lot going on in terms of Oh, how yeah, I mean, gosh, I mean, a little slow on the indexes here. So with this yeah. type of, I mean, you know, Powell's on the mic today. I am uh, not looking to do, I mean, I probably want to play the short side here today. I'm, I'm just trying to... Uh, look for a, like a decent trend gold's coming nicely off its high oil was the really the big mover yesterday you had that inventory draw that was pretty steep sure nine um, plus million barrels yeah yeah nine plus million barrels i'm looking at a 5970 pullback in oil right now i'd like to uh trade that 5970 level and then i got a level at 6011 so i mean those are obviously just you know i'm a, most primarily a day trader so those are shorter time frame levels that i'll be looking for 
uh, some bounces off of. We'll see if the S&P can get down to uh, yesterday's lows. I'm looking at 90 quarter and then 94 quarter for the S&P. But man, we're really having a tough time fully cracking that 3,000 level. 27,000 uh, 27, for the first time in history in the Dow here today. Uh, so that's, I know, that's lots kinda, of, you guys was, got a 27,000 hat over there? Not yet, I know. We ordered it on Amazon. It's supposed to be here in two hours. Well, we'll get S it. Seriously? <laughs> no, not yet. It arrives, you can I, change I believe it. I mean, they, they deliver half the things I order in two hours on Amazon. Do you, I mean, do you guys got uh, Whole Foods by you down We down do, and we're actually lucky in Tampa. I'm not sure about Boston up by Basel, but Tampa has a big hub. A mile. Okay, nice. So yeah, I'm sure. And, and um, but Tampa is a big hub as well. So we get a lot of early roll out, roll out in terms of uh, one of the you know when they started doing same day delivery. Tampa was one of the first markets when they started expanding it because they have a, a big hub. Um, so we we got a lot. We we get we get some good action in terms of what they put out. Interestingly enough, I saw a tweet from Bezos. It was either a tweet, maybe it was on Instagram, one of his accounts, I follow him. And um, he was saying how he binge watched Stranger Things 3. We're jumping around. But that, of course, on Netflix. And I said, man, that's that's interesting that, you know, he's basically out there saying. And then I started thinking about, well, if Jeff Bezos couldn't comment on anything that Amazon competed with, he probably couldn't talk about almost like anything in the world because they compete with almost everything, you know, in terms of Microsoft, Netflix, HBO, what could you compete with, you know, talk about. So he's he's resigned to the fact that uh, everybody's his competition and he's not afraid of, of touting them when he still comes at it. I thought it was interesting because I don't think you'd ever see Reed Hastings from Nate Netflix talking about binge watching an Amazon Prime show, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's for sure. But, I mean, he's taking on the world pharmacies, Yeah, you know. Health, I mean, I, I just hope he takes on healthcare, you know, for the sake of all of us. And I think they are with that uh, venture they're doing with Berkshire, right? Uh, so I'm sure they got plenty. Yeah, Berkshire with J.P. Morgan in on that too. Yes, right. Thank you. Right. Yeah. So no, what about no, no. gold, Jack? We had some action in gold. I know you're always looking. We ran up yeah, again so last right night. Now, yeah. So right now, basically, like my upside targets on this on this daily move. I mean, I don't have on this computer. I don't have my charts loaded, so I can't share my screen. But I'll, I have the gold I'm, chart up here. Go for uh, it. Okay, cool. So the the, uh, I'm looking for like the next run up if we can get a breakout actually to head up to like 1465 is going to be uh, my profit target and then my major levels that are just below as general supports you got the halfway back for the week so the low of the, the week to the high of the week divided by two is 1408 1408 half uh, that could possibly come into play today we're not far from those levels about four points and then we have a couple of bigger levels I'm watching 1407.3 and then 1396 is really the level I want to see us consistently stay above 1396 if we do get a couple you know if we start losing 1396 and build some momentum below that I would uh, probably play a breakdown for like 30 points at least um, I really think it's important to hold that level moving forward. So that's really my crucial support level, that 1396. So sure. mark that up. I have alerts set there. And then today I'm, I am going to be looking for a day trader on that 1408 half level, which, like I said, that's the low of uh, – that's what's that, Tuesday, which was the low of the week, to the current high is 1408 half. But, yeah, fantastic run yesterday. Um, you know, reversing half of it. And if, if you look at an hourly chart, that 1408 half, that 50% for the week is really where we consolidated and then caught that second leg of the bid out. So I always like to line up my Fibonacci sequences with just general support and resistance levels that other traders might be looking at. Sure. And that's at 1408 half. Nice. And um, and how about oil? Because we talked about it, oil quite a run yesterday, man, and uh, continuing kind of that run, that run all the way. I mean, we're sitting almost at, at highs. We made it to 60.94, but we're sit, sitting 60.42 right now. Yep. So uh, right now I'm looking at 60.11, and then there was like what I call an extension sequence, which was a, a really aggressive bid sequence. Um, the current fib draw I would look at it would be the actual high of Monday. So that's 58.46 drawn to the high and uh, that 50% retracement brings us back to 59.70 uh, and that's 59.70 being the most significant level that I'm going to be looking for uh, in oil here today. Okay. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's amazing the volatility we've gotten in oil, in gold, and it makes sense, I guess, when you look at vol. Oil has its own deal in terms of just last night, right? We had Iran and um, British Navy in terms of a ship getting attacked. Pretty interesting that that stuff 
keeps coming to yeah, light. Yeah, I, I saw the, Iran had denied that they did that. I don't know if yeah, they did. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of rhetoric out there in terms of not who to believe, but there's a lot, you know, it's it's uncertainty, I think, which is remarkable that it hasn't. It's like another Captain Phillips type movie with oh, a, man, you know, right. they board the ship. <laughs> Tom Hanks, is he getting ready? He's getting ready. That was a good one. Yeah, playing the role, playing yeah. the role. Well, um, Jack, what, do you, what do you guys got on your radar? Any Anything specific, any markets you guys are really liking commodity-wise? I haven't paid attention. I know uh, corn's been on a big, big run. You know, I had you asked you about corn? really what I look at, which is the gold and the oil, man. They moved, they've they moved so much recently, too, in terms of the volatility. Gold itself, um, that was a nice bounce. You start getting under, and I think I had, I had played with even you. You talk about... Um, the Fibonacci's Jack, and I think I had pulled it up. I had talked with it on Basil, I think one of the earlier shows. You know, just going from the run that it started in the late May, a 38% retracement is 1378. So this is kind of a healthy area, but if you start backing down to there, I might be a little bit worried. And that's a little bit longer time frame, but you know, the Absolutely. run has just been. Well, Jack, we appreciate the update, man. As always, you have a great week, man, and we look forward to talking to you next Thursday. Take care, guys. Have a good one. Okay, Thank you, man. Fred. Folks, Basil and I are going to be coming back in three minutes. Come on back and join us. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got markets pretty much hanging around where we were all morning, Basil, with the S&Ps right now sitting at 29.99. And I wonder briefly, Basil, you do such a great job, of course, on your daily newsletter. I have it up here. Let me pull it up. And uh, folks, Basil, he does this program with me today. He's going to be coming up at noon every day for the Tiger Technicians Hour. And then he's filling in for Tom at 4 o'clock today. And how does he cover all that stuff? Because Basil's got a plethora of information. But check it out on the front page, folks, the opening call. And I just have you know some of the webinars that you've done, Basil, for your subscribers. One just even last month talking about the tide. So subscribers gain access to all of these webinars, folks. Check out that opening call on the front page. And of course, Basil's charts that he's talking about every single day, Saturday. Sundays sometimes he's putting out updates for subscribers and uh, so Basil what are we talking about in the Tiger Technicians Hour along with of course everything that we already covered that's going on in this market Very important. look at the IWM it's down a dollar 24 this is the Russell 2000 at 154.42 it's been stuck in a range yeah the Dow would in fact it's 134 up right now but the S&P is only up 2.50 so the Dow should really be up about 30 or 40 points so it's got other factors within the other components within the Dow that are doing well. This is the kind of uh, action that I, I like to look at for subscribers. It's really important that we focus on levels of support and levels of resistance. And I've just made it real clear. If there is a really big power move in the next couple of days above 27,270, then the turnaround will be uh, stalled. But if at any point we start to decline quite sharply, S&P breaks some key support levels, I think we're in for at least a, a choppy period. And that's kind of what I'm thinking. We're in for a little choppy period for a couple of weeks. And it'll be interesting. We got Powell um, in front of Congress. And I saw he's, he's got headlines. They're going to be making their way all day oh, today. Oh, good. I like it. That's right. <laughs> Basil, thanks so much, man. We look forward to the show at noon and at 4 today. Thank you very much, Tommy. Thank you, great. folks. Stay tuned, folks. Live programming all day at TFNN. Have a great Thursday.